my name is uh, Alec Murphy. I'm stood behind the back of the bar. I'm going now going to pick my best team ever. Fall back um, immediately, it, which is very, very difficult indeed. Um, I'm going to go for an Australian uh, a fella called Clive Churchill, the little master, uh, great player, great goal kicker. I think I'd get lynched if I didn't do that with the Australians. The first wingman I would pick uh, would be a fella from South Africa who played for St Helens called Tom Van Vollenhoven. He was a magnificent player, he had pace, he had ability, he could score tries full length of the field, he had a good pair of hands and he was a world class player, the likes you not see every week. He played for a great club called St Helens and uh, they had many more great players, uh, you know, I could name a lot more who, as these two. This is killing me, picking two players, because um, one of the players uh, I'm going to have to leave out is uh, another Australian, but I'm definitely going to have to put Billy Boston in my, my famous wingman. If uh, anybody has been as good as Billy, um, with a ball in his hand, tackling, taking the ball full length of the field, you name it, he can do it. And uh, he probably has been one of the greatest wingmen that's ever played, a Welshman. Um, come from Rugby Union, uh, come from Tiger Bay, uh, went to Australia with him, fallen over to him on my wings, and two great centres playing with him, we'd never lose again. My centres, uh, this is a job where I'm going to have to think very, very hard because I've got um, two centres, uh, one is English, uh, one is uh, a lad called Eric Ashton, who was my tour captain, played for Wigan, captain of Wigan, been to Wembley, won the Ashes, magnificent player, great player. My second centre is a match winning centre, probably had everything that's needed in rugby league. Great pair of hands, pace to burn, good defensive player, a lad called Reg Gaznia. Absolutely second to none. If he got the ball 50, 60 yards out, it was a try. Played with a, a great Australian side, played with, played with the great St George, who probably won more titles than anybody there's ever won uh, when they had the great team. People like Eric uh, Popper Clay, who was a standoff player from them, Harry Wells, you know, all great players. But Reg Gasnier, for me, was be a very, very difficult um, centre to pick, but he was a great player, so I'll have to put him in. I move out now to the half-backs, and this is going to be a problem, because um, I'm not being big-headed. I'm picking the scrum half first, and uh, I think that um, I'd be the best scrum half that's ever played. I don't take that back. Some people will be sending me texts and saying, You've, your head's gone no bit or smaller. Uh, I just had confidence, uh, I, I did what I said with ability. Uh, we won things, you, I, don't, I talk about things, but I also uh, win things as well. I look for a standoff then, who I've got to say, um, I want him to uh, win me matches as well. And there's a lad here, um, very touch and go, uh, a lad who, from Wigan again, a lad called David Bolton. But I would pick a, a lad called Bobby Fulton, who played standoff for Australia. Was a world class, very, very no nonsense standoff. Had everything what was required to be a world class standoff. He was a great player. I move on to my forwards. Now this is the this is the easy thing for me because without a good pack of six forwards, you can't win anything and you must start with the front row. And I'll start with the front row. I know some of these players we're talking about, we're talking about playing in the modern era. These fellas would love it. Think on these fellas I'm talking about now. Some of them had day jobs, had to go to work, had to go down pit, had to work on building sites and go out, and go training, then go back to work and then play rugby. My uh, best prop forward ever, was a lad who uh, the captain of England, uh, played for England, won the Ashes, played all through uh, a match with a broken collarbone uh, in a chess match against Australia and with eight men fit on the field. 
and he played all through the match. Alan Prescott would be my number eight. Definitely my number eight. He had pace. He started off on the wing uh, when he started, so you can see he went a little bit bigger because uh, obviously um, he ate a little bit too much, but uh, he still put it to good use in the front row. He was an absolutely magnificent player. Hooking. Uh, I always like people who play in that position with pace. I know the game's changed now to where well, you don't strike for the ball, but in them days it was a skill. And um, we had people who could not only get you the ball, if, if you had a good hooker, you'd get 60, 70% of the ball and guaranteed you to win most of the matches. Um, this lad is from Hull and he's a young fella called Tommy Harris. A very confident player, a very, very skillful player and very, very quick. I think his job in life, I think he wanted to be a halfback really, but he wasn't quite fast enough to, good enough to be one of them. But uh, he was a great player. I've got a problem now where I come to number 10. I played with a, a lad at St Helens, who not the biggest name that's ever played in rugby league. Um, scored a try in Australia, a lad called Ab Terry, uh, number 10, 18 and a half stone, uh, run 75 yards and sidestepped the fullback, Australian fullback, and went under the sticks. That's how good of a prop forward he was. I am finding it very difficult to find a difference. I am going to go for a lad from Wigan, and he church me to say this, called Brian McTeague. He was second to none. If he walked in church, you'd think he was an altar boy. You put him on the pitch, he was very, very difficult man. He was a professional boxer. Um, he could have made a living at boxing, and uh, I wouldn't have liked to have stood. He, he hit a fella in Australia uh, who'd kind of done something he shouldn't have done. And he, he, uh, I'm watching the game, and I'm, I'm watching Brian McTeague, and we, we disappeared down the other end of the field. And this, I'm watching the Australian who Brian has actually come in contact with in the middle of the game and he's kind of caught him with one. Brian's got back to the bottom, got ready for the scrum, and we're still watching this fella as though he was drunk coming down the, the field. He got 10 yards from the, uh, from the scrum and collapsed. And uh, Brian turned to me and said, Spud, I must be losing my self. He said, they normally go down a lot quicker than that. So you can tell what kind of a player he was. Now we're coming to the main men the second row forwards, the class players. And this is going to be very, very difficult. I've got, probably I'm not going to even to think about leaving him out because I would never leave him out. A lad called from, from Whitehaven, who, um, from Cumbria, played for a, a little team called Whitehaven. Um, I went to uh, his christening for his little lad. And uh, he was one of them where he had, uh, very little control and the baby was getting christened and Dick had the biggest pair of hands you've ever seen in your life. He was the quickest second or forward that's ever played the game. And we're standing, uh, the priest is just blessed even boy and Dick picks him up and throws him about six foot in the air and caught him in the church. And I thought, good God. So I knew for sure when he had the ball in his hand, A1 would never get, he'd never drop it and nobody would ever catch him. Great, great player. He's my number 11, whatever. My other second row, I've got another problem. And I'm going to say things now where I think that uh, I've got a person like Derek Turner who I think could play in the second row. And I've got people like Johnny Whiteley, who's definitely a loose forward, and so is Vinci Corrales. But I am uh, going to go from a lad from Workington who was a second row forward called Brian Hedger. Great pair of hands, big man, 18 and a half stone, great mover, great sidestep, tackle, no, plays the game how it should be played and was a pleasure to play with. Lee forward, there is only one. I'm afraid he's the king of them all. I love Derek Turner, I love Johnny Whiteley, but Vincent Corelius was the number one loose forward that he's ever played. Worked in a scrapyard and played in a scrapyard. 
didn't take anybody whoever in front of him he could put him on the floor world class player that is my best 13